there is no limit to inquisitive mind and perfection of knowledge. The Infinite Science program focuses on the latest scientific achievements, new developments and unique discoveries by Kazakh scientists. Infinite Science is an opportunity to see the future of science. Styrofoam, a material that is the most widely used in packaging. And more often than not, it is usually thrown out into the garbage can. American scientists have developed a way to transform the styrofoam granules into valuable components for reusable batteries. This invention will not only contribute to improving the environment, but will also increase the capacity of batteries by 15%. Hello, my name is Yerke Bulanbek Muhanbet, and you're watching Infinite Science. In today's program, Diagnosis of cancerous diseases, flow cytometry method, palladium versus nickel, a new catalyzer for obtaining solid fats, promising rice cultures, haploid biotechnology in selection. Every time news about the development of a new drug for the treatment of malignant tumors brings new hope. However, we tend to forget the simple truth. The earlier the disease is detected, the easier it is to fight it. The diagnosis of cancerous diseases is one of the most pressing problems on which the entire world of medicine, including Kazakhstani medicine, is working. Scientists at the Nazarbayev University, in collaboration with colleagues from Harvard University, are developing a new method for the diagnosis of cancer of the gastrointestinal tract, including the large intestine. These organs are hard to reach and troublesome for diagnosis. There are the traditional methods, such as endoscopy, colonoscopy. They are quite invasive and painful. That is why in order to avoid this, we just want to be able to take a person's blood and examine it. Cancer cells release so-called vesicles into the bloodstream of a person. These vesicles are present in the bloodstream of a healthy person, but their quantity in the blood of a sick person is much higher. These circulating microparticles are the subject of scientific research. We check the quantity and the content, the basic components of these microparticles, analyze, characterize them and identify as a potential biomarker. The idea to study microparticles as biomarkers is not new. The innovative aspect of the research of Kazakhstani scientists is that they've employed the method of flow cytometry. This technology allows to get more clear information about cell activity. A high-powered apparatus, a flow cytometer, is capable of investigating each individual cell in the bloodstream and analyzing it based on 21 parameters. The principle of its operation is based on the registering of fluorescent signals from each cell. We will take a sample of someone's blood, mark out the microparticles. There is a special method for that. Color the antibodies and they light up on the apparatus. The laser beam hits these antibodies and gives us information based on the colors of the samples. Subsequently, we can analyze this data. This device significantly improves the efficiency of the work of the scientists. The new method for the diagnosis of gastrointestinal cancer will allow patients to go through diagnostic analysis pain-free. What's more, it is possible not only to diagnose the cancer in its early stages, but also to determine a person's predisposition to it. This gives them the time to take the necessary measures and hence improve the chances of a good outcome. People have used chemical processes for the preparation of food products long before the establishment of chemistry as a science. And to this day, it continues to play an important role in the food industry. Every year, more and more applied innovative developments appear in this field, which provides solutions for the food production industry. The so-called solid fats are used in the production of margarine and cooking fats. They are obtained through chemical modification of vegetable oils. This process is called hydrogenation. Hydrogenation takes place with the aid of catalysts. More often, catalysts containing nickel are used. However, they have a number of disadvantages. Their use requires high temperatures and hence high energy expenditures. Additionally, nickel results in the appearance of trans isomers in the end product that are harmful to the human body. Under high temperatures, solid fats break down and fatty acids form which poison the food product. 
Many laboratories of the world are engaged in the development of a safe and at the same time effective catalyst, including the laboratory of the Al-Farabi Kazakh National University. Here, scientists have decided not to use nickel and have developed their own catalysts on the basis of palladium. This has made the whole process much safer. Hydrogenated fat obtained on the basis of our catalysts is safer since it has a lower content of trans isomers. By the way, palladium is not the only active element. Another important element of the catalyst is diatomite, a distinct geological material. It is used as a base for palladium. The duo of diatomite and palladium significantly reduces the necessary working temperature and hence minimizes energy expenditures. Today, the technique developed by Kazakhstani scientists is being tried out at several enterprises. Preliminary results show that the use of palladium-based catalysts in the food industry of Kazakhstan has great prospects. Rice, after wheat, is the second most important crop culture. The world demand for rice grows daily. According to the forecast of the UN, by 2020 it will reach 781 million tonnes. At the same time, production is expected to reach only 750 million tonnes. The probability of a shortage makes the task of breeding rice cultures of high productivity much more pressing. Among all the varieties of rice, glutinous rice is considered to be the most healthy. It is notable for the minimal amylose content or starch. Glutinous rice is a distinct variety of rice that is intended for use in baby food and dietary products. It is a sticky type of rice. On the territory of Asia, sticky rice has been cultivated for a long time already. However, in Kazakhstan, its cultivation is not an easy task. The reason behind this are the climate conditions of the country. We could just bring here and cultivate Indian, Chinese or Japanese rice cultures. But the thing is that these countries are located in tropical regions. And in tropical regions the day length is much shorter than here. And these crops, because of the photo period, do not even bloom or form seed kernels. The Institute of Plant Biology and Biotechnology is searching for a solution to this problem. Here, Kazakhstani scientists are working on the cultivation of local rice cultures, taking into consideration the country's climate and specificities of the soil. For the first time, they've employed haploid biotechnology in the selection process, which involves the use of male reproductive cells of plants. This method allows to significantly shorten the selection process, which normally may take up to 12 years. For example, the sign of the presence of amylose takes around six to seven generations to stabilize. And with this method, the method of haploid biotechnology, it can be stabilized in one generation, thus shortening the selection path. Thanks to the employment of modern technologies in the field of bioselection, scientists have already cultivated the first local glutinous rice culture. It was named Kazveta and is currently undergoing governmental level testing. The vegetative period of Kazveta is 110 days, which is compatible with local climate conditions. Aside from glutinous rice cultures, Kazakhstani specialists are working on the selection of rice with colored pericarp. This is the so-called colored rice, which has beneficial properties along with an unusual appearance. One of the most important links between extraction of raw materials and their use is the process of enrichment. It allows to significantly improve the concentration of valuable components. Kazakhstani scientists have developed several unique variants of new agents which affect the efficiency of extraction of raw materials. More on this in our next program. Discover infinite science with us. Until next time.